Finally, the rains are here. Every farmer's prayer is God to provide the rains to bring good production and not destruction. I am a small-scale farmer, and small-scale farmers in Kenya produce more than 70% of the food production in Kenya. Majority of these small-scale farmers depend on rain-fed agriculture. But do you know that some of our farming activities, like bush clearing, can actually lead to serious soil erosion? And if unchecked, the runoff can actually sweep all the crops on the farm. The sad part is that the runoff water carries away the top soil, which unfortunately is the most fertile section of the soil on the farm. Today, I want to talk about soil conservation measures. Of course, it's also a water conservation measure in a way, as we learn by the end of this short video. No engineering maths will be involved, just basic intuition and maybe logic. Now, not every land is flat. In fact, most farms in Kenya are on a slopey topography. Let's first consider a farm with a slight slope, like 5 to 10 percent. So, what options does a farmer have to control soil erosion? I think it's best I first explain the concept of contour farming. This is your land, as we see it, with just a slight slope. I am using the top or the area view of the farm. The first thing is to create some form of barriers, because when it rains, the runoff water will carry away the soil downhill. Now, the idea of contour farming involves carrying all the farm activities like plowing, planting, and weeding across the slope. You should not do these activities along the slope. So, how do you come up with the barriers? You first establish points of the same elevation through a process I will explain in a future video. So, remember to subscribe and click on the notification bell to be updated. The barrier has to be at the same elevation level because if the runoff flows along the barrier, it may even cause more damage due to the cumulative water volume. Use materials available to make these barriers. It may be stones from the farm, especially if you're in arid areas. You can plant grass strips for the barrier, or you can even use the old or dead plant material. Back in the village, we used to use old banana leaves and stems to create these barriers. Can you see how these lines of dead plant material have been established? Now, I may be using images to demonstrate these structures as parallel, but in the real world, is a bit different. Let me use this model to explain some concepts. Let's assume your farm is on a hill or a mountain, and you want to establish points of the same elevation. You will end up with a structure that looks like this. I am sure you have seen landscapes by the countryside that look like this. This will come out more clear in the second part of this video where we will be doing the measurements. Now, these measures that I've discussed will work for a land with just a slight slope. For a land with a larger slope, like 25%, these measures will not be enough to do the work. So, in this case, what options does a farmer have? This brings me to the next topic of terracing. The most common terrace in Kenya is the Fanyaju Terrace. Fanyaju is a Swahili term that can be loosely translated to forming or constructing upwards. Let's assume this is your slopey farm. You dig a ditch and place the soil upslope just like this. By heaping the soil upwards, you form a band. I like using a 2 by 2 feet ditch. It's normally advisable to leave a space like a half foot or 15 centimeters before making the band. This prevents the soil from sliding back into the ditch. The spacing between consecutive terraces depends on factors like slope intensity, soil depth, and factors like farm mechanization. 
The more steep the slope, the closer the terrace is. If you are using farm machinery, you would rather have wider spaces but bigger terraces. I like using 20 meters in between the terraces. So how do these structures work? Any soil erosion upwards is controlled by the soil band. Can you see how the run of water from the rain settles on the upper side of the band? That is the idea to restrain the water with the soil. By the way, I want you to visualize something unique with Fanyaju terraces. Let's focus on a single portion between two Fanyaju terraces. The slight soil erosion that occurs from the runoff will lead to gradual leveling. This will eventually form benches, of course over a long time. So these terraces contribute to leveling of portions of the land. Now, for you to improve soil fertility of the exposed subsoil, of course on the upper side, please adapt the use of farmyard manure. Else, you'll end up with stunted yellowing crops on the top side and the strong crops on the lower side of the same bench. And I believe you are a farmer like me, so you need uniformity. And now, let me talk about another structure called Fanyachini Terrace. Fanyachini is a Swahili term that loosely translates to building or constructing downwards. This structure is easy to construct as compared to Fanyaju. So, where do you need Fanyachini Terrace? Let's assume your farm is located here. And on the upper part, you have a tarmac road, or there is a greenhouse, or simply just a farmhouse. So, all these structures are expected to bring too much runoff on your farm. And in this case, Fanyaju will not be enough to handle this large volume. You dig a ditch as usual, but now the soil will be placed downhill. This has to be bigger than Fanyaju and I like using a 3 by 3 feet ditch. So what is the purpose of this structure? Well, it is basically used to conserve the soil and even at times divert the runoff. If the idea is to intercept the runoff and possibly divert or direct the water to a safe disposal area like wetland or forest or a river, away from your farm, then this is commonly called a cutoff. If the idea is to catch and hold the incoming runoff to maybe give it time to percolate slowly in the soil, then this is commonly called a retention ditch. A retention ditch is usually bigger and is the only solution if you don't have an alternative place to divert the water. Please note, should you divert water to a neighbor's farm, then you will have an unfortunate day with the NEMA or the Kenyan police or even both. So there is a legal implication if you handle runoff carelessly. One last thing I need to explain. I will call it water table or level. Let's assume your Fanyachini terrace is constructed here. Can you see that the percolating water will benefit the lower crops than the adjacent ones? Unless your crops are deep rooted like trees, which is not always the case. I like to assume that the deeper the ditch, the farthest the water level will be. You can be more creative and make the ditch more wider than deeper to hold the same volume of runoff and bring the water level close to your plant root zone. I hope that makes sense. Now, it's a good habit to use plants with fibrous roots like grasses, like napier grass, planted on the band. Their roots help to hold the soil together. Some farmers like planting tubers on the soil bands, but I don't think it's a wise idea. I think the very act of harvesting these crops, you destroy the soil band, which costs a lot to construct. After all said and done, routine repair of these terraces need to be done 
at least annually to maintain this structure. If the terraces are not as closely spaced, you can also consider planting trees like Grivaria or Lucena. Such trees can help as windbreak or even fix nitrogen on the soil. Now, I know there are different ways to explain these structures in the books if you do your research, but I decided to explain them the way I use them in my farm. And by the way, this information is also crucial to landscapers too, and those guys who write the impact assessment reports. I hope you have learned something interesting. Remember to like, share and subscribe. You can also consider donating to my online work by donating on the link on the description of this video. Thank you for watching and God bless you.